Right, well hello, and in this episode I'm going to show you how to sharpen the chain on your chainsaw and to check it if it's not cutting in a straight line, if it keeps veering off to the left or keeps veering off to the right which is what this is doing right now it doesn't have to be for a Husqvarna, it can be for pretty much any chainsaw uh, through normal use you will wear the chain and it will also wear the bar itself and I'm just going to do a quick video on how I'm going to go about trying to rectify this and if I can. So let's get on with it. One of the first things we're going to need to do is remove this plate or cover which holds the bar and chain under tension. Uh, some chainsaws will have a couple of uh, nuts here which you undo with a spark plug tool. This has got a quick release, no tool required mechanism on it. And what you normally find under here uh, yeah, look at that. That's filled up with sawdust. So I'm going to need to clean all that out. And it collects all in here. That doesn't help. So what I normally use is diesel or petrol. It's perfectly good enough. So I'll give these items a quick squirt. Doesn't need a lot, but it really helps the, break the oil down because this, uh, all this rubbish sits in here because it's uh, attaching to the uh, lubricant oil which goes around the chain. So now I've got this soaking. You should be able to push the bar back a little bit and then release the chain. And then you can remove the bar. Now what a lot of people don't realize is that under this muck, that little hole there that is filled up with muck has one on the other side. This one isn't filled up with muck. I don't know if you can see, there's a little mark around it there. And that lines up with this part here on the chainsaw, which is where the oil is pumped out of the chainsaw by the little pump inside. And gets fed into this little hole which in turn goes down this groove, the guide, the chain guide, where your chain rides when it spins round and lubricates it. And obviously that's what's helping to collect all the sawdust and the muck in your blade. So this is also going to get a spray. But before I do spray it, in case it affects the you looking at it, I hope you can see in the sunlight, there's a blue line there. And there's one there. I hope you guys can see it. You can see it quite well here. And that blue line is from heat. It's when I've had a blunt chain and I've kept cutting when I knew I should have stopped and gone and sharpened my chain, but like we always do when we're out doing the job, you keep going half the time. So let's just take the chain off. That comes out like that. Now what that blue marking is telling me is that the chain has got the bar rather has got hot or well, both of them would have got hot and then you need to preferably without a glove on you need to feel along this edge and I can I can feel I don't know if you're going to see a very silvery edge you can see it here it's where that end is being pushed down and squished and that being pushed down and squished is by the chain when you're chopping on a log like that the log is that wide you've got a lot of pressure on the bar there being pushed with this chain sliding around it friction and it starts making this bar hot now i think what's happened to mine is that it's worn badly and i'm going to give this a quick clean and i'm going to take you into the workshop and i'll show you how i'm going to check it and we can sharpen the chain like the bar We'll give the chainsaw a good squirt with diesel. I like to get inside the, the engine casings there as well. Not only is this sort of normal maintenance on a chainsaw, they are very tiny little engines that are two stroke. They run extremely high RPMs and they get hot. And if you've got sawdust and other rubbish jammed in, in these gaps here, or even inside the vents here for the pull start, that's what the chainsaw relies on to help keep itself cool and if that gets filled up with sawdust and everything else you can make the engine get too hot and you can damage the cylinder and the piston inside it 
or the life of the chainsaw will be greatly reduced. So it's a really good idea to keep chainsaws clean. So now this has been soaking for a little bit, I like to use an air compressor, which I've got here. After a couple of seconds of that, you can see how much cleaner that is. That's the oil way where the oil should come out with a little rubber seal in there. You want to always make sure that there's no rubbish inside it or sitting across the top of it. A little bit of muck left in there, but for what we're about to do, good enough. Now the mucky case. All chainsaws on the top have this, which is the safety brake. And what that does is it turns this dial here and this silver ring gets tighter and it clamps around this, the clutch, like a brake. And if you've got all this junk and rubbish in there, it won't stop it completely working, but it can reduce the, the speed and, the, and how quickly it stops the chain cutting. And if you, if you have an accident with a chainsaw, often your hand will naturally, which is why it's there, activate the brake and stop the chain immediately, which can stop you having a nasty accident. So having this working, is important so don't let this part get filled up with rubbish it can also just by being packed in there get it hot and it can help burn your clutch out so it's a good idea to keep these clean so there we go that's all that cleaned out now we're going to go in the workshop so now we're in the shed the bar it's a good idea with a screwdriver or some other piece of flat steel to clean out. Look at that, you see all the rubbish coming out of that, the guide. All that's in there and we need that to be clean. You can also do this with the compressor. But I like to physically put something in there. Because that stuff can get baked in there. Probably see it on my glove now. Toothbrush is quite good. And whilst we're on the subject, some people might have noticed there's a little hole there and there's one on the other side. It's easier to see there. That is for spraying a lube in there and that lubricates the little star wheel on the end and that must be free running if that's not spinning very freely or anything like that you might need to buy a new bar because that is what the chain links sit in that's what the chain links sit in when it rotates round right well I've got the chain on it's facing backwards but that's irrelevant those teeth there's quite a lot of rock in there I don't know if you can see that there should be a certain amount and that's not bad and these teeth, they run inside the bar. And then this edge here is what runs against the, the top of the bar. Through the use and wear, that chain running along here, this can wear out at a funny angle like this, or it can wear like that, where the grooves where the inner, where the grooves where the inner edge of the bar away and the outer edge is slightly higher. I know I've got a bird edge on there which needs treating. Now what I want to do is with a straight edge, making sure the side of the bar is clean. I don't know if you guys are gonna see that. Now what I'm checking for, is when I hold that square on there, I'm looking right in here, across the top of this, and I don't wanna see the left hand bar tapering down and it's a bit hard for me to show you on camera and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it but I'm looking for light coming under this not in the channel because light's going to come through there but there shouldn't be any light on the top edge of this bar where it's sitting against this edge and I can it's not a lot but I can see it all you need is a small file like this any file will do really 
Now what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to take off the, the burring on the edges of the... You might be able to start seeing a silver line appearing now, I can see it. Better. Even though I've got a glove on, the glove is actually helping me feel the little bird edge. I don't know if you guys can see it, there's one right there. In fact, look, if I move the file, hear it hitting it, there's a little upstand like that of metal just there. Yeah, look, my file's catching on it occasionally. There's a bit, and the side I've just done. Nothing. That doesn't technically affect the chain cutting or affect it wobbling, but you're just mushrooming the top of the bar. Let's get rid of that last bit there. You can hear it. Gone. Now for the other side, because if one side's like it, the other side will generally be like it. I've already done this side, so do this side. There's a bit there. Oh, I know. And you just keep going until you've got rid of that mushroom flat. Now when we file across the top here like this, you want to keep it long even strokes so you don't start making the chain uneven. And you don't want to file these little teeth away here because if you do, the chain won't go around the tip of the bar very well and it can actually come off. So you stop filing just behind those rivets to the bar here. You can go right up to them, but you wanna be very, you wanna keep those long strokes and stop them around here and then make sure that one's underneath and then just file your bar gently there. Now I find it better to lock it in a vise. Do not over tighten it and crush it. You'd have to be, you'd have to go pretty silly to do that, but. And when you're doing this, you want to keep it level. You want to do both bars at the tip tops of the bar at the same time. You want to file both sides evenly at the same time. Don't want to be like this, don't want to be like that. Nice and level and you can keep one finger on the bar there and use that as a... I'm stopping shy of the end. Now, that's getting better already, just after a few passes. You clean your, clean your file out, or you can tap them, but don't tap them too hard, because they'll, they'll break. And that will get rid of the, the metal that's catching in the, in the teeth of the file there. I can see that is much better. I can see the shiny surface reflecting now. There's no more scratches and dings in it where, which there were. So now we'll turn it over and we'll do the other side in the middle of the bar, just enough to hold it, no more. I've put you in a different position. Hopefully you can get a better view. Stopping shy of the end again. And that is much better. Run a paintbrush through it just to paintbrush or your toothbrush just to help draw out any more of that rubbish. But we'll give it a blow with the air compressor before we're ready to put it put the chain back in it. Because I can see lots of silver filings in there. So that's about the bar done. You can't keep doing and doing and doing this, you just can't. You'll wear that, you'll wear the height of this down. So here's the chain in the bar. Like I've already said, you can't keep doing what I've just explained to you again and again and again and again. The bar does have a, a life just like the chain does. Now to work out if you've, re if you've removed too much of that material or you've done it several times and you wanna know if it's still in good health, you can simply put the chain in it And if you've got enough height, the bottom of that tooth is not sitting in the bottom of the, of the gully 
which it would rain. If, it, if you had taken too much off, you would see the chain sit like that, where the bottom of that shark's tooth would hit the bottom of this gully and it would keep the chain too high off the bar. That means you need a new bar. And as you can see, this one, it's doing all right, because it's, it's, I've only done this to this twice now. Now I'm happy that this bar is healthier, I'm gonna show you how to sharpen a chain. You, you can often buy kits from Steel or Husqvarna or anybody else, but where there's varying chains, and mine's a 0.325 pitch, that's what it says there on the file, 0.325, and these lines on it are what angle you should hold this file, so this line here is parallel to the bar of the chainsaw then you know you've got the correct angle and when you come to do the other side you use the other one to go that way i often take one of these with me when i'm out on the land working so i can quickly sharpen the just put a little bit more of an edge back on the chain if it starts dulling off so i'm just going to put the chain back on the bar and then i'll show you with it on it so let's put it back together again chainsaw before you fit it Give it a good clean off of any rubbish it might have picked up and make sure that the oil hole here is clean because that sits over that little hole like I've already explained. Okay, put the chain on, slide it in as far as it will go and you make sure you put the chain on with the teeth on the top bar facing to the front. So this is how we're going to put this on like that. Not like that otherwise all it's going to do is run on the non-sharp part of the chain slide it over the clutch first get some of the tips in there feed it into the groove on the way down extend the push the blade out a little bit and it should find its way into the bar there is a little knob there, a little finger that sticks out on this case, which is in my case is adjusted by this wheel and I'm going to minus and what that will do is push it forward. That locks into this hole here. Now make sure that engages into there like that. There we go, that's just dropped in there. And if you've got one of the older style chainsaws and you've got the nuts, this is the time you, you put the nuts on, but you only put a mild bit of pressure on, like I'm gonna do now with this, just till I can feel it supporting the bar. Now, that chain's too saggy. If you were to cut like that, you're really gonna get hurt. It's liable to come off the end and the chain will whip round the back of the chainsaw and could hit you in the leg. You need a chainsaw to be reasonably tight and as you're tensioning it run it round so it takes out any slack I would say that's not far off you want to be able to pull the chain out you want to be able to pull the chain out but so the end of the shark's teeth stay inside the bar which is what secures them that to me is pretty good. You'll often find once you've cut the first couple of cuts, I always say once you've done this, couple of cuts in the wood, then recheck the tension because there's nothing like the action of actually cutting in wood to, to get the tension 100% right on this. Then if it's gone saggy again, you would just a little bit undo this, a little bit more tension. Uh, and if it's gone super tight, then you'd undo this again and back it off a little bit just so it's free in the bar. So that's that like that. I like to put the, the safety bar on, the safety lock which stops the chain moving. And I hope you can see that one's cut in that direction, that one's cut in that direction, so we call that the left tooth and that the right tooth. And I'm going to start on the left because it's it's the easiest side for me to do and when I would come to do the right hand side I'll turn the chainsaw around and then I can do the teeth the other way. 
I'm not going to do many on this because I've recently sharpened it and I don't want to, to damage it, but I just want to show you the principles of it. So I've just put a black pen line on there that I hope you can see a little bit more clearly. That is to be parallel with the bar. And then normally about 10 degrees down with the handle. One, two, three, four. And the reason I'm counting is you want to make sure that you do four full lengths of the file on every single tooth. If you don't, and you do, for example, four on this one, and two on this one, and five on the other one, and these teeth become different lengths. And when the teeth become different lengths, that can also cause the chainsaw to cut at a funny angle in the wood, because one side is getting to cut deeper into the wood than the other side is. So they must be kept the same length, these teeth. The easiest way to do that with a hand file is just count the strokes on each tooth that you make. Then you've got this little tool here, and this part here checks the rakers, and the rakers are, that is a raker, that's your cutting tooth, and that is a raker. And what the raker does is it determines how deep that's the raker under the file there. That determines how deep these teeth can get into the wood. Basically the raker will scratch along the, the log and it holds the tooth just at the right amount. So for example, say it cuts two millimeters of wood on each slice. If they're too tall and you've sharpened your chain and your chain's not cutting or you're seeing very, very fine sawdust coming out the back, it generally means that the raker needs to be taken down. And there's a, there's a ratio that you would do it. So there's a little step in it here. And the tooth there is going to hook. You can see that little grayed area where the tooth has been sitting on it. So I'm going to put that on my chainsaw like that. And as you can see, that raker is now there. And the file you've seen me use, you would run it across there until the raker is now the same level as this. And this compensates for when you've sharpened the chain and it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. As this comes back, it allows more to be taken off the raker. It's a guide basically for you to get the rakers all even and the same length, and mine are. They're not poking above the tool. So that's the two things that you really need to do when you sharpen the chain. Generally, I would say four to six times that I sharpen a tooth, I would look at the raker. Other than that, you can generally, other than that, you can generally hand file with this four to six times before you need to touch the rakers. I've just taken the chain back off the chainsaw. And this is an electric chain sharpener. There's a disc here. And you can use this for sharpening the chains. And I like these machines for a few reasons. One, it saves me having to hand file it. But more importantly, what I've just explained about having the teeth the same length, is even when you know what you're doing, and I'm not saying I do as a chainsaw sharpener, there's a, there's a lot of skill in it, and even I'm not as good as a, a full-time uh, chainsaw sharpener. Uh, you see the Portuguese out here and they can sharpen their chain in a couple of minutes and they do it very well by hand uh, and without the guide. Those guys normally just use this piece of eucalyptus stick which is what I've got and the files that you buy to replace to put in the machine, the file, uh, the tool that you've just seen me using, these are the replacement files and they would just use this by hand. Obviously once you do it day in day out you get, you get, a, you, you get used to it, you make a knack for it. So, right, I'm going to show you how this bit of kit works. So here are the teeth. I've got the cutting edge facing forwards. That gets laid in there. Now, this little finger here is a stop. There's a tooth and it's gone too far, so I pull the chain back and it gets trapped in that. And that is adjustable by this screw. And what you do is when you bring the disc down when it's running, you want it so it just takes off the tiniest 
amount of the tooth at the front. And then when I drag it along, the next tooth is the opposite direction. So I miss that one. I go to the next one. You can see the disc is in the same direction as the, the tooth. Miss one, next one. And into the tooth. And what that will do is that will cut and make sure that they are all exactly the right length. So even if you're pretty proficient at chainsaw sharpening with, uh, by hand with one of those tools, every 10 times or something that you sharpen your chain, it's quite a good idea to pass them through this because it makes sure that these are exactly the right length. And then to cut the other direction of chain, so this is that one, the next one, I'll show you is now wrong because the tooth is cut in that direction but the disc is trying to cut it in that direction so it would ruin my tooth there's marks on here and I tend to run these at 30 degrees and there's little marks down here you can see where I've got a white mark there now when I do this one it will cut the right shape for the other tooth they're a little bit noisy a lot less louder than a chainsaw so that will keep your chain in really good health you can buy these in most shops you don't need to go and buy a super expensive one I think this one was around 30 euros only one thing you do need to be aware of that you buy one with the right thickness of disc because there's various types of chains but um, like this is a 0.325 I've got other chainsaws which you would have seen earlier they've got thick more aggressive chains on chains for cutting bigger wood or a, a much thinner smaller chain than this for the single-handed chainsaws for pruning trees just ask in the shop and they'll make sure they give you the right machine with the right disc on it and if you've got various uh, chains you can buy different discs and you can swap them over although I imagine that to be a bit of a pain but so let's get this chainsaw back and see if it cuts correctly So that's cutting a lot better now. So I hope some of you have found that interesting. Uh, don't be daunted by it if you've made it to the end of the video. If you feel that it might be a bit too much for you to do yourself, I totally understand that. Uh, you'll find that nearly every single chainsaw shop will provide all the services I've just shown you and a lot more. They will sharpen your chain for you for around three euros each time which isn't too bad if you're not a regular user of a chainsaw, but I use my chainsaw a lot during the certain times of the year, and those three euros would add up over time. I've got to leave the farm and go and get it done, etc. and I'm lucky that I've got those skills to do it. But don't be, don't be scared. At least now you know what to look for, uh, and you can take your chainsaw along to a chainsaw shop and get it done by somebody that, with all the right equipment and knows exactly what they're doing. So, hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video.